Hello, and welcome to Clea's World. I am Clea, and today I would like to share with you more of the information I've received from the 25th dimension during my last BQH hypnosis session. I'll be reading from a transcript of the session, and when I refer to Lorraine, I'm speaking to my practitioner who's asking me questions I've prepared in advance of the session. And when I refer to me, I'm speaking to myself under hypnosis, which means that the answers are coming from a 25th dimension. Before I start reading, I wanted to thank you as always for subscribing, liking, and commenting on this video. I really appreciate it. All right, let's jump in. Lorraine. In the last session, you said, let's use an analogy that you might be familiar with. Let's say you're taking a game like Monopoly and you know the rules. You throw dice, you move by X number of spots, depending on what you get. And then depending on which box you fall on, you have to do certain things. So you have to pay a certain amount of money. We are now coming up with a new rule where we say, when you play Monopoly, instead of using two dice, you can use four dice. Or we're saying when you play Monopoly, you do not go to jail anymore because if you end up in the jail box on the board, you realize, yeah, this is not real. I don't like this. So I'm going to move forward to Park Avenue. Except that right now we know these rules and we are not willing at a higher self level to dramatically change our external reality because as you continue repeating to us, we are desperate to keep the shell in place. What would it be any different in any quote unquote future incarnations? Knowing is very different from truly knowing and implementing. Can you comment, please? And this was a question I had for a long time since they told us that we can change our reality. I'm like, why are we not changing it to where, I don't know, we win the lottery or something great happens. And so I kept going round and round with these questions. So this is the answer from 25th. So I, because we were told that here we want to keep the shell in place. But I'm like, okay, in the future, we'll want to keep the shell in place as well. We don't want to break the reality. So how would it be different? You know, if I'm on a different planet, so I'm experiencing something that's not great, why would I all of a sudden be willing to change the reality? I mean, I want to change the reality here at 3D level, and that's not happening, at least on the surface. So here's what the 25th had to say about that. Yeah, so that's a very good question, but we'll say, yes, we are changing our reality, and that's the thing. The longer we stay here, the more we realize that we are changing it. So what was implied in Claire's question is, she needs to say, how come we don't change it from what we see every day to this? Assume like you're moving into a castle, like in a fairy tale, like completely different. You can see that it's different. Your life is completely transformed. Why don't we do that? We don't do that, not because we don't want to do that, but because we already said we do want to stay in the same game. Now, if we were here for a few years, we would have that kind of transformation. But we would still want to use the vibration that's available on the planet to create that transformation. We don't want to just have instant manifestation, for example, where all of a sudden I turn all of this, you know, my cats become horses like a Cinderella, and they were laughing, or whatever they become. We don't want the magic. So it seems like Claire was implying that there would be a moment of magic transformation, instantaneous. We don't want that. We'll never do that. We will always want to play within the appearance of the game. Also because, especially on other planets, we already said this information will be available for us when we need it, when we want it, which means it's not going to be in our face all the time because maybe the rest of the population on the planet will not want this information. So we can't just all of a sudden show up in front of our friends and I'm levitating. Say it's a 3D planet like this. I'm showing up in front of my friends. I'm levitating 10 feet in the air. That would not be fun. It might be fun for a minute as in shock value, but that's not really what we mean when we say we want this. This is how we want to change our reality because then we wouldn't even feel like we're in the game anymore. What is the point? We're just doing whatever we want. So we go break up all the games, right? We're breaking up all the games. And now there are people that have done similar things to this, the equivalent of this on this planet. And then they become lab rats because then of course science is going to start doing experiments on them or whatever it is. We don't want that. That's not fun. So when we say that we are going to have access to this and we're going to change the rules, we're going to be able to do exactly what we are doing right now. And you would know exactly what we're referring to if you actually saw it the way that you will see it very clearly once there is no more veil, which is, again, how quickly we change everything here. So if you were to stay here a few more years, not even that many years, you would see society being remade. When was the last time that society was remade? Maybe with the last reset. 
every time there's been a change in society, it's been the dark basically turning the screw one more time. So now this would be incredible. And so in that sense, yes, we are going to be using these newfound powers, this newfound knowledge, but we're not going to use it in the way that it was presupposed in the question, which is we're going to, again, it looks like a magic wand and you're changing everything. Because one, you can only change reality for yourself. And if we did something like that, we would be breaking the game for everybody else. We don't want to do that. So again, imagine if you were in front of your friends or your husband and you turn into a tiger, he would go crazy. This is not fun. This is not something we would want to do. So when we say we can change the game, we don't mean it visually, visibly like that. Doesn't mean we're not changing our own reality, but you will still change your own reality while keeping in place the rules that we want on that particular planet. Maybe there are planets where you could fly about on your own. So you're flying in front of your friends. It's no different from anybody else doing that. But here, this would not be acceptable. So this is not something we're interested in doing. Lorraine, thank you. In the last session, you also said there is actually something interesting for once in this game, besides obviously the takedown itself, where it makes sense for us. It justifies us staying. We totally don't mind staying in that sense. We totally find it worthwhile, beyond worthwhile. It's not even a question. Now, already also said, as interesting as it is, if we had thought it would take us 10 years to have this experience, we wouldn't have done it because it's too much. We're all tired. We want to get out of here. Not just you, Lorraine. Everybody wants to get out of here. So this was the end of the quote. And this is my comment, which is just basically the gist of this question. But the fact is that we cannot time our experiences. And even if we could, we'd be wrong before. And that's why the takedown took us 300 years. Could we still be here for years? Because many of us will not make it in that case. We'll find other ways out. Right now, I'm even second-guessing my willingness to remain a light worker, which, quote-unquote, forces me to be stuck in a crappy reality like this for hundreds of years, when I should have moved on a long time ago. Perhaps I will join the people who are in the middle and are truly free to do what they want, since it seems that they do much better than us on the team of the light. On this planet, the dark was rewarded for lack of integrity, whereas we often suffered by not being willing to compromise. Please comment. Me. So the 21st was laughing, and they said, so yes, we understand. We are laughing, not to minimize, obviously, what Clea is expressing, but we are laughing because she just needs a vacation. She's exhausted, like all of us are exhausted. And no, she's going to continue being a light worker. That's her interest for now. Everybody can change their mind. And no, she's going to continue doing this work. It has been particularly challenging here, we'll say. Again, we have never reached peaks of 70 to 80% darkness, not even close. We've taken down planets at 60% darkness, and those were already one-offs among all the planets in the eons we've been here. So yes, it's a big deal. So that's why Clea feels so exhausted to the point of saying, maybe this light worker idea, being a light worker is not such a great thing. And they were laughing. So we understand. But yeah, so to comment on this question, we are going to get rest on the earth. It will be just fine. It will stay there as long as we need to feel like we've had our fill and we're ready for a new adventure. We will not have the lifespans we've had here. So of course, if you want to stay there 10,000, 20,000 years, we can. Eventually, all of us are going to want to change. This is just what we do as essences. We want to try different things, and that's fine. So Clea will be just fine. But basically, the main question was, how do we know? And they're referring to how long we're still going to be here. Clea is concerned that, especially knowing that she was one of the people that came up with what she calls this brilliant idea, you know, she says it with a sarcastic tone, this brilliant idea of staying behind, what happens if I come up with another brilliant idea? So facetiously, we would like to joke that, Lorraine, you need to keep her in check because you did not come up with any of it, but then again, you stayed behind. <laughs> so maybe next time you put your foot down and say, no, we're leaving. And it does crack me up that the 21st is making jokes about this. <laughs> All right. So, but no, that's a fair question because again, we said time does not exist and we only use time to estimate how long we believe the experience is going to last for us or how long it's going to take us to feel satisfied with a certain experience. As we said, we are satisfied right now that we are moving toward complete satisfaction, meaning that we are going to achieve our goal. But yeah, could it take longer than we have said? Yes, it depends on you. Yes, you absolutely can. But right now, it looks like we are on par in terms of the recall. And then after that, can you decide to stay longer, much longer? Yes, you can. 
Right now, you don't seem intent on wanting to stay longer. But again, you can decide differently, so we can't really tell you. At the same time, when you say, oh, could it be that it takes much longer than planned? We've talked about this. This has come up many times when we say, oh, but you don't understand time. And therefore, you say something is going to take two hours, but it could take two years because it's all the same to you. We have assured you before, and we want to assure you again. We understand time very well because time is not real. When we use time, just like when we were referring to the takedown, we were really timing, quote unquote, timing, which again is a measure, it's not an actual thing. We were using time to tell you, to reflect back to you based on the pace of work that you had done, on the amount of work you had done, on the pace of work you had kept while doing this work for 300 years, you expect it to be done by July 2021. And indeed, by July 2021, most of it was done. And in fact, everything happened. Everybody else is gone. And so the only thing is that you decided, instead of just switching off the lights and turning your back and leaving, you said, oh, let me look around here. Let's see what else we can do. So it's not a matter of time. It's a matter of you completely added a whole new thing that was not in the plan. So do we know that after you finish with this one more thing, you're not going to want to do something more? We don't. We cannot tell you. At the same time, we can't tell you that right now you don't have anything else that you want to be working on. It's all we can tell you. So we understand when you say, again, could it be two years? Could it be 10 years? We said, it's not like you thought that was going to take you 10 years. But again, we we're referring to this one task. And this task is not going to take anywhere near 10 years. Because we said, even though it might not happen in April, it might happen later on, it is going to happen. And it is going to happen in what you consider a reasonable amount of time. It's not going to be something where we look back in 2050 and we're still here saying, we should actually really think about recalling this thing, this, this, this thing, this famous flu thing. Nobody's even going to remember the famous flu anymore at that point, you know, <laughs> we're laughing. And again, it's only us who would really want to be here. We said a million times, we don't want to be here by ourselves. We are by ourselves here. You just asked us how many people are left in your town. You just asked us how many people are left in St. Louis. There's no one here. So no, we're not going to be here for years and years. This is not our interest. We don't want, it is very difficult for us. As excited as we are about what we are doing now, it is very, very difficult for us to be by ourselves, to feel like we have this huge planet available and we're walking around with a bunch of NPCs. It's not, this part of it is not fun for us. Lorraine, thank you. I, like Claire, over the last year, have questioned why I decided to go. Just, it seems that the people in 3D chambers and the people that have gone with aliens have it way easier than those of us that have decided to stay. And she's referring to her decision to go to New York. Me. We would say yes to the people in 3D chambers. We would say the people who have gone with the aliens don't necessarily have it easier because they are dealing with a lot that is quite difficult from a human perspective. Some are having an easier time adjusting than others, but it's not a walk in the park. In that sense, it's almost better to be here now because remember, not all of us are doing the same work at a conscious level. We're all doing the same work in the background, but we're not all doing the same work at a conscious level. So many of us are going about their life and hearing these words that we're saying, but not necessarily fully consciously aware of the work we're doing. The fact that we are alone here, et cetera, et cetera. So they might be okay. Of course, with the usual snacks, the usual 3D dreadfulness, but it might be better than somebody who's on a different planet right now with the aliens. First of all, shell-shocked. And secondly, missing home and saying, you're taking down planet Earth when they don't have the comfort that we take in the fact that it's okay. It was holographic in the first place. We have a better one built. So yeah, we assume things. And of course, we understand what you're saying. You're saying that it's very hard to be here right now. And obviously, we would have to agree with that. Lorraine, thank you for that perspective. That was good to have. Okay. It's taken us so long to get to the takedown that so many have channeled information about New Earth, et cetera, even though it's distorted because we didn't want to know that we would take this planet down. Were the two planets taken down before ours also aware that a takedown was going to happen or that something would happen? Did they know that there was a new planet waiting for them? And how did they feel about it? Me. Yes and no. So they knew, of course, because we know everything and as much as we want to shield ourselves, we know. So of course they knew, they had the same information percolating as what you would consider new age spirituality, you know, new earth or whatever they called it at the time. 
New Earth, you know, whatever planet it was for them, they would call it New Planet X, and it's going to be wonderful. But you see, similar to what's happening here, again, in the New Age spirituality community, where they say New Earth is here, we're going to build this, we're going to ascend. Again, even when you know that there is a takedown coming, that there is an end coming, you still want to play the game and bring it into your understanding. So yes, they knew about it in that sense, of course. They didn't know it as in there were billboards saying, oh, okay, so we're moving next month. Everybody get ready. They knew it just like we do. Because again, we do download this information. We know this information. The higher self knows everything. So of course, there would have been people talking about it. But they certainly did not think they were going to move to another planet. They were all going to die and move to another planet. Just like here, people were not thinking we're taking this planet down. You don't hear anybody talking about the fact we're taking this planet down. This is information that we introduced last year. Everybody else is saying New Earth is here. New Earth is a state of consciousness. New Earth is a vibration. Once all the sleepers wake up, we'll finally have New Earth. And can you hurry up already? So again, there is no judgment. It's perfectly all right. All these people are gone. All these people say this are gone anyway, and that's fine. But yeah, that's what would have happened there, or that's what happened there. That's what we're telling you. Because again, they didn't want to ruin the game just because even the day before they moved on, they wanted to believe in the game. And even when they moved to the new planet, they wanted to believe in the game. So they didn't necessarily become consciously aware of certain things the way we are right now. We're already said this type of consciousness is new within the matrix. This type of consciousness that transcends the matrix and tells you, and again, we know that we've heard this, that this is a game, et cetera, et cetera. But then the next thing you hear is us versus them and dark versus light and blah, 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 blah. No, this is all truly a game, even the us versus them. And so this information we're giving us is the first time we have wanted it. That's why we happen to be aware of this. But we happen to be aware of it because we wanted to know when this was going to happen. When we decided we're going to distribute this information on the 25th, we specifically, if you want to think of it in terms of individuality, we're not individuals, we know this. We, one by one, chose to be aligned with this information and to run into it. We wanted to know how the takedown was going to happen because we could have moved on without knowing it, just like the other planets. They went to bed thinking, yeah, tomorrow's another day and we're waiting for everybody to improve themselves to do the work so they can ascend. That's the difference. So yeah, they knew, but that doesn't mean that they knew the way that we know right now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.